Ray, glory to thee and the house. Okay, this is me at uh, Geekism with the Yorkshire Twang for uh, the Klingons, the top ten Klingons in... Well, I'd still say the Star Trek universe, the, the original universe. Uh, I did get pulled for saying that Discovery wasn't in the same universe, but I don't care, I still don't like it. So, maybe I'll get used to it one day. But anyway, so, Klingons, uh, they've been around forever. Uh, they're a fantastic race. Um, I love the the warrior aspect of it, the honour, the martial aspect of it, and I love the kind of the way they look and the way they speak. They're, they're kind of like swashbuckling bikers. Um, so yeah, uh, it was quite difficult getting this top ten list. Hopefully, well, you can agree or you can disagree. In Klingon fashion, I don't give a toss. Um, so we're doing a top ten, so let's get going. What mash can? played by Michael and Sarah. I know he was one of the first Klingons to appear in Star Trek, the original series. He's clearly one of the uh, Nehrat suffering uh, Klingons, and, but I am particularly singling him out for his appearance in Deep Space Nine. That episode where they brought all three of them together was uh, really good. Uh, I just liked Kang's character in this, uh, especially. He stood out more to be in Deep Space Nine than, than what he did in the original, should I say. And um, he's sort of cool, calm, contemplative, ready to attack at any time type of thing aspect of it. And uh, he's re the, the line where he's kind of recounting his uh, planet's history, where he says, I remember the time when the mere mention of the Klingon Empire made worlds tremble. And now they're opening bloody chip shops. But uh, yeah, no, it's great impact that character. Uh, cool, calm guy, but obviously you don't mess with him. And uh, Jabzia knew how to wind him up. But other than that, uh, yeah, a great historic warrior. Hut. Kalar, played by uh, Susie Plaxen. Well, I think it's only fair to put half Klingons in here because, you know, half of the time Spock referred to himself as a Vulcan, uh, as if he was ashamed of his human half. Uh, so, yeah, Ambassador Kayla, she was in a, quite a difficult position again because it, that was the time you had the first kind of half Klingon, half human. And uh, so she was an ideal ambassador for um, the Klingon Empire and the Federation. Um, but uh, yeah, it just uh, in, in, the, in her case, she would not have had it easy. But when she's under threat, she can stand her ground, and she did stand up to Gowron pretty big. So yeah, well liked character. Uh, even Wolf liked her in the end. Jor Grilka, played by Mary Kay Adams. Yeah, obviously the House of Quark. Brilliant episode. Yeah, you didn't see much of her. I think she only appeared twice in the whole of Star Trek, as far as I know. Uh, certainly the Star Trek that I like to watch. Uh, yeah, great character. Sexy character, but at the same time, just the brilliant aspect of how she uh, she sort of approaches Quark and then she sort of jokingly says, that's why I'm going to let you take your hand off my fire before I break every bone in your body. And just the way she stands up for herself, uh, being able to run the house as a female by herself. So, good one, Grilka. Shush. Kern, played by Tony Todd. Um, Kern obviously first appears in Next Generation, where it's great because he's just another Klingon. You only really see Worf up until about that time, really. And uh, so you get this Klingon who's dressed in Klingon attire, fully dressed in Klingon attire, and basically talks down to the entire crew, you know, says this is not how this is not how a Klingon ship runs, we're gonna run it my way, and then he turns around, the crew awaits your orders, Captain. And then you've got to especially the bit where he tells Wesley to shut his gob when he's whispering. So yeah, always a good thing. A very unfortunate I mean, is it honourable to feel sorry for a Klingon, but for what actually happened to that guy in the end? Uh, Worf was out doing all these noble things for the, for the sake of honour, and poor old Kern got the uh, crap end of the stick until he had to pretend to be dead and have his memory erased in a 
probably a two Starfleet fashion. I almost wish that he would have been allowed to end his life the way he wanted to, uh, while he still had his honour. So, yeah, is it fair to feel sorry for, for a Klingon? Maybe not, but uh, it's a good job he's uh, forgotten everything now. Gah! Belana Torres, played by Roxanne Dawson. Yeah, great Klingon. Uh, great, great human. Again, half and half. Uh, only when she loses her rag does she become fully Klingon. She restrains herself a lot of the time. She, do, she, she takes no nonsense. Obviously, at the beginning of Voyager, you see her as uh, someone with a quite a loose temper, breaking, you know, breaking people's noses and uh, throwing things at the door, trying to answer it and what have you. But the other thing I'm pointing out, I've put them together. The Phage episode where the Vidians split her DNA so that she's kind of like the timid human and the full Klingon. Um, the full Klingon is, yeah, it's fantastic. So in, in a lot of senses as well, I'm probably nodding my head towards the actress as well for a superb execution here. So yes, you know, with some rodent I killed. But yeah, she also brings out the uh, the best in the timid human half on in this particular. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Fuck. Probably a surprise to a lot of people. But not to others. Maltz, by played by John Lyriquette. Um, yeah, you're thinking, well, he only had a short bit in Star Trek Three: Search for Spock. But that's not where he shone. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm being memory beta about this or memory alpha about this, but the book, The Genesis Wave, by John Vaughnholz, which is brilliant, by the way. Uh, it's in three books, and Maltz appears a lot in that and he really he really shines um, so he's the only one who knows about the Genesis wave from his, his time so yeah fantastic uh, noble gets his nobility back gets everything back and has a glorious death at the end so yeah um, and obviously the, the, the reading of Genesis wave and the projection of malts uh, I have to give credit also to Tim Russ for his uh, delivery of that Loche Core by John Colicos. Um, John Colicos, I believe, or Core was the first Klingon you ever did see in the original series and superbly executed. Uh, you really start to get an idea of what the Klingons were about just by just by Core being there, looking quite grave, but kind of understanding Kirk's need to not deal with people that are too peaceable, like the Organian, until they got understood better. Um, and obviously John Colicos was the uh, the original Baltar in the original cheesy, yet still preferable to me, Battlestar Galactica. And then Kor appears again in a few episodes of Deep Space Nine, where he's this jolly, he's a, a guitar master that you don't mess with, but he's still this jolly, he's now this really jolly, jovial kind of uh, Klingon. So, yeah, uh, there's a lot of depth to his character. So, yeah, just fantastic. Yeah, Kor's brilliant. Wedge. It might surprise you that this is not further up. Worf, played by Michael Dorn, of course. Worf, I would say... Uh, yeah, he's, he's a Klingon, and he's, he, when he has to be a Klingon, he knows how to be a Klingon. Uh, he's had to be tempered by Starfleet officers and, and gentler people and learn politeness and things like that. So, you know, he, he's tempered and soft in that sense. He, he knows not to go too far when it comes to trying to damage a human in a you know battle situation. Um, even if it's a serious battle situation, he won't rip somebody's head off. But, uh, yeah, certain things, it was about his honour. Uh, you could also argue there's another video somewhere talking about whether Wolf was a good parent or not. That's another difficult one. And also, you know, obviously the business with Kern and what finally got decided in the end. Um, that was probably, again, a bit too much Starfleet influence, but... What you can say about Worf, he, uh, he, he always wins a fight anyway, so even if it is a fight to the death. So, so with, in the case to Worf, he is the most adaptable Klingon, I would say. Cha Martok by J.G. Hertzler. Um, do you know, I, I was doing this list and I, and I got so far through, how could I have forgotten about Martok? Uh, so yes, luckily I did remember him. Martok is the Klingon's Klingon. There's nothing 
he know no well no airs and graces really but he knows how to ally himself he knows how to appreciate other people's uh, means of fighting fighting for it was purely about honor he came up from the trenches he ended up getting awarded probably positions that he didn't like I think he preferred being a general so yeah uh, the relationship with Worf and Martok is great the relationship between Martok and Cisco eventually is really great and yeah He's just a fantastic character. I, yeah, really do like him. I'm afraid, yeah, he is, he is set one above Mr. Worf. An honourable mention. Uh, this might sound a bit uh, weird saying an honourable mention when I'm talking about these particular people because would Klingons believe in such a thing? You either win or you lose in the Klingon philosophy. So you don't get consolation prizes from them. So while someone is eating your heart out in front of you, would they be giving you a blankety blank checkbook and pen? But I think it's worth mentioning these. Honourable mention to two dishonourable Klingons. Yeah, you've guessed it. Lursa and Bator. Yeah, played by Barbara March and Gwyneth Walsh, respectively. Um, they're just a great pair together, practically inseparable. Um, you know, Lursa is the quiet, more thinking one, and uh, Bator is more the sort of, let's just go out and rip some heads off or shag some it, basically. Um, I could almost imagine these being played by French and Saunders, because they kind of remind me of French and Saunders in a strange sort of way. Um, <clears throat> you know, I could imagine them both doing these in, in some kind of spoof, but it never come off, obviously, even at the right time, because Joe Public wouldn't be aware of these characters very much. But Jennifer Saunders as Lursa, especially, I could really see that coming off. And uh, yeah, Beto, yeah, done French with a bit of work. She could probably pull that off as well. But yeah, a great, a great pair. You, you, you gotta admit it. So then, who was on the top of the list? What? You know he's not been mentioned yet, so it's gotta be him. Gowron, played by Robert O'Reilly. Gowron is just brilliant. He, again, he's. He is a Klingon's Klingon. He's, he's probably more, as we know, he ended up being a bit more for political gain at the end. But he was an ace Klingon, and it's probably as much for the actor as well. Uh, the way this character came across, the voice, you know, the glory to you and your house, and all that sort of business. And just sometimes the way he stood when he was challenging, or, you know, he, he stood like a predator. And obviously the eyes kind of help as well. But, um, yeah, he, he kind of knew how to liaise with well, Picard, especially, in, in the Federation. Uh, but, yeah, brilliant character. Just got kind of dark, almost cloak and dagger. Or cloak and dagger wouldn't be very honourable for a Klingon, but, yeah, just proper, brilliant character. The best Klingon, though, he had some faults. Were, I just think he's a brilliant example of a Klingon and well executed by the actor. Uh, but actually, just a, a side note, if you put Gowron and Quark at side of each other, look around their eyes. Their eyes really do look similar. So um, anyway, that's been all that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. So comment below if you want. Until next time, live long and don't get hemorrhoids. Oh yeah, of course. I'm Kapla! <laughs>